Nothing I says, you fucker. I'm gonna break it. So coming into the week, we were definitely happy with the 2 week, and we were pretty excited coming into it, but um, I knew that this week was going to be a pretty tough one for the team in general, uh, not just because we were playing Vancouver and, and Seoul, who's looking kind of strong right now, but also because the time frame with everything going on with, with the team and the time between matches and everything we got to deal with right now. It was a rough schedule flip because we played one of our matches on Sunday, which is the last one, and then we played our match against Vancouver on Thursday, which is the first day of the week that Owl matches start. So we didn't really have much time to prepare. Going from a Sunday game to a Thursday game only gives us three days total to prep for the match. Coming off of a lot of prep work we did for Toronto and Paris, it was really hard to fit everything we wanted to fit in into just a couple days. It was a really tiny window uh, in terms of timing and just in terms of preparation with all the changes, me including to the team, not, and we needed to make some adjustments and sadly it was still ongoing and we had these like Vancouver and Seoul match which was like one of the hardest schedule we could have I think. And so a lot of the strategies that we were wanting to improve on and work on we didn't quite get valuable data and it felt like we couldn't really apply it as much as we could. And, you know it definitely felt like an unfortunate kind of frustrating week. Uh, felt like we could we could have done better. I know that it it definitely impacted the staff, definitely impacted the players. Unfortunately like we weren't as prepared as we would have liked to have been but it was still important for us to make sure we stayed on a regular schedule. We did as much as we could prepping for Vancouver. We didn't want to change too much, so we just focused on a lot of our basic stuff, making sure we tightened up our game, uh, make sure we were ready for the 3-3 matchup that they're strong at. We felt pretty good about a couple maps, uh, but there was definitely a couple maps that we felt like we weren't necessarily prepared for. From my perspective, um, that was kind of frustrating because it felt like the work that that I had put in to trying to get prepared, just it didn't really fully click uh, with everything we were going for. So it made for a really odd, odd match day start for us. I think it's, I think it's even better to be the first of the day. They tell us 9.15, it's 8.15, and we're about to start. We're all feeling like pretty confident that we can either like win a tight series or, you know, just like do really well against them, maybe like not win, but we knew there was like a definite, a definite chance for us to win and we're pretty confident that we can pull it out as long as we just played on top of our game. If we couldn't beat Vancouver, we could definitely, you know, do well versus them. So like regardless of whether we'd win or not, we felt pretty confident. Because this is probably the, one of the biggest matches they will have all stage long and they need to perform. Excellent play though from OJ. Punso on the side and Twilight too. Slime goes down, but that doesn't mean Vancouver's done fighting yet. That was a big shatter coming in. And that is going to be a one fight for Dallas. They flip it at 99% for the Titans. The way Vancouver plays is very unique compared to other teams. Feels like you should be able to punish them, but they always manage to pull it back and, and, and take back the fight. And those, those kind of fights end up being pretty tough, tough to deal with mentally. It's again as Vancouver in control of the point, one fight away from winning our first map. Yeah, trying to get onto the point one at a time, but that's just not going to be good enough. The Vancouver Titans taking the first map in the series. Flexing on the Dallas Fuel, and this has not been the set that we were imagining so far as the Titans continue to dominate the Overwatch League. Coming into halftime, we had a, we had a pretty good talk about where Vancouver was kind of focusing and exploiting. All right, let's talk real quick. Whenever we're like transitioning, they're focusing hard on Unko, and then in fights, they're focusing really hard on Zach. Um, so we need to be we need to be ready to adapt, okay? We knew they played aggressive, but we weren't really exactly sure how or who they were going to go on. So it was a bit rough, and it took us a while to adapt to it because we weren't used to teams like going in on somebody and then like one second snap, everybody turns on to a different target like right in the middle of the fight. We really hadn't played against any team that had done something like that before. So when we go out there, like we go out there with with our chests up, with our heads high, and we can still take this win. Highland Terrace. Nikkeo's got high energy though, yep, he sees it. You can see him kind of scouting around, looking, where's the D.Va at? Where's the D.Va at? Not in sight? Great. Here's a grab, here's three kills, and Dallas Fuel, they're figuring, they're figuring it out in the end. Two points picked up for them, and now they have four minutes to push for the final point. Oh, need a kill or two, big gutter, Hawks is out. Great focus, great focus on Hawks. They ate another grab, No, nope. what a play on his side, making all the difference for his team. Team Matrix after Team Matrix, and it's all working out. Dallas Fuel showing some life here after the halftime, tying it up three to three. This has certainly got to be it. Yeah, AKM is running around in circles trying to stay alive. It's not going to happen. A self-destruct will come out and somehow finds two. It's oh, so close. Nice try, guys. Okay.
I mean, it felt like after halftime, we definitely played better. Um, we managed to adapt a bit to, to how they were doing, but uh, I don't think it, it, it wasn't enough. You know, it just wasn't enough for us to, to overcome that. The first two maps, we just took like a little bit too long to adapt. The third one, we kind of had it down, but we just made a couple mistakes. And then going into the fourth map, it's like kind of rough going into the fourth map when you're down 3-0. It's a pretty rough game. Probably our toughest match of the season, um, just based on everything. So like overall, a few of the maps were pretty close. I think we, we still played pretty well. Um, there's a lot that uh, we can improve on all around from you know, coaching staff, to players, to everything. I think I think overall we did well, but there's always room to grow. Uh, so I think this week and this match is a great opportunity to learn and grow from it, okay? Overall, throughout the whole series against Vancouver, they were just the better team, straight up. Uh, their 3-3 game is one of the cleanest in the league, if not the cleanest. So when they play their style and they're able to get away with everything they want to do, they look like the best team in the league. And that showed in their match against us. Vancouver is experience because experience, communication, synergy is one of the biggest points in a GOATS team to be really performant and Vancouver had it all. It, it, it was really difficult. You know, they ended up taking the series 4-0, um, which, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, kind of sucks, but, um, you know, we didn't want to take too much from that. We wanted to focus more on the Soul match um, because we feel like the Soul match kind of was more important. I said the schedule is really tight going into our next match, just one day break and then again match against Seoul right away. So again, we didn't have all the time we needed to prep for everything, but we still felt like we could be the better team as long as we stayed on our game. First thing the staff did was trying to work on every map we needed to work on for the Seoul match and trying to just make the basic adjustment we needed. I think we, we definitely were a lot more confident about facing Seoul. You know, the, the stress from the week was still something weighing on the players' minds, I think, pretty heavily, um, weighing on the staff pretty heavily, and you know, felt like you know, there was just a lot, a lot of pressure from the outside for various circumstances. Marvel getting cut off, and there's the sound barrier coming in from Closer. Fitz not quite connected with the targets he was hoping for here, and it is going to be the Dallas Fuel turning things around. Almost he knows. Heard it, but they are getting wiped out. Munchkin uses the rally, but that is going to be a very clean fight here for the Dallas Fuel. And that is going to be it. Soul Dynasty picking up the first point on the jump. This is it, the final fight. Dallas Field, they need somebody, and they are already playing point guard. They can't even come in. They can't even come in. Get smushed, though. That's not going to help things here for Seoul. And it's down to Marvel and Toby, the last two aligned for Seoul Dynasty. Last man here, or hamster. But that's it. Dallas Field, tie it up. Two to two. We got AKM. OG just backed out. He saw what just happened to that guy. He's not going in there anymore either. Seoul takes a 2 0 lead in the series over the Dallas Fuel. I think the first half of the series was, was particularly tough for us mentally. Um, we kind of went in and it felt like, it just felt like things weren't clicking, that we weren't necessarily like all engaged on the same page. Going into the first map, we had a few slip ups. It wasn't anything major. It was just a few tiny mistakes that cost us that map, but you could feel like the, the mentality in the team was sort of dropping already. So coming into halftime, when the players came in the dugout, you know, it was, um, it was one of those where I felt like it was important for me to address it head on. Reset your mind right now, okay? From the first map, we're playing like we've already lost, okay? Get that shit out of your mind. If we go in thinking that we've already lost, or that we can't do it, that we don't trust each other, or that we're not gonna push, we never will be, okay? So when we go back in there, whenever we go back, we think through our plans, we have to be willing to take the space, we have to be willing to push, don't be confused, listen to the call, okay? When we, when we pushed against Ryan, we had half people go right, half people go left because we didn't clear, be clear about what we're doing, okay? When we make the call, we trust it and we go in. Chill out, reset your mind. The last two maps don't matter. Only thing that matters is the next two, okay? And the next three. Going into map three, we definitely uh, kind of had, had, had that change of style where it felt like uh, we, we could definitely win this. <laughs> Seoul Dynasty lose their Vegeta first. They had to trade it. They couldn't quite get the latch on to Zachary. And now j goes down as soon as the transfers out. It is going to be a solid hold here for the Dallas Fuel. Excellent work on their part. Seoul Dynasty was wondering what they could have done differently. And it is definitely not going to pan out for them this time on the offense. Stay alive on that team. Marvel falls next. 
It does not seem like Eichenwald and Soul Dynasty get along very well. It's not been a great map for them so far. Still some work to do for Dallas, but they could easily win this map. Who's going to play it? Shatter thrown in. Does connect with one. Toby looking for the play. No one's going to find Fitz. That's a lot of damage gone. They need to trade one back immediately here for Soul. And sure enough, there it is. The double from Toby. Time and time again, the guy keeps delivering. AKM hanging on by a thread. Soul Dynasty taking the Series 3-0. Oh, no. That's so close. It's okay. Good try, boys. Hey, listen, regardless, that's the same, like, the same level of, like, aggression and everything that we need to do every single time, okay? We look back at the match in general, and it's a situation where, you know, the first half felt like, um, you know, we, we weren't all there, and we kind of lost those maps because we weren't clicking. And the second half was we had these huge time advantages where we should be able to take these maps, and then, and then we couldn't close it out. And that, you know, that's definitely an extremely stressful thing for all the players. I know that everyone was extremely disappointed with how we performed this whole series, and extremely disappointed uh, just in general with this week. So it being an 08 week for us is, is really tough. 0-8, it's obviously like really, really, really rough. And I think not everybody's happy about it. Like losing in general is bad, but getting the worst possible map score, it's obviously really upsetting. But I think everybody knows that from our practice and like our performance the previous week, like we know that we're definitely still a really good team. And when we're playing well and we're prepared that we can beat pretty much anybody. So I think moving forward, we'll be fine. It was just like a really rough and unfortunate week for us. I'm gonna go into next week. Uh, focus on improving, focus on fixing our stuff, okay? Uh, we got stuff to work on, and so we're gonna come with a good mentality and ready to do it, all right? Um, <clears throat> even though next week's gonna be pretty busy, we're still gonna be focused on us and our play and our team first and foremost, all right? So we're gonna focus on that next week, and yeah, we will uh, we'll clean up all this stuff, right? My goal is just to kind of remind people that like, even though it was an 08 week, like there's lots that we can learn from, lots that we can grow. As staff and again, as players or as a team as, as a whole, we need to make sure we're always looking forward. We can dwell on the past as much like all day, but it's not going to help us. We can look at our mistakes and we can learn from them, but we always need to be focused on growing and making sure that we're staying together as a team and getting through this. I'm hoping that you know we we can take the positives of it, or we can make positives out of the negatives, and we can we can mold that you know for our team going through in the future. And, and we get to go into Dallas next week and play the home stand, which is something that I think is, is really cool and really awesome thing for all the players and staff to be able to experience it. We're the, the first home game ever, um, first true home game ever, and that feels really good. And, and even though that we had this tough week right before, like we're trying to keep that in isolation so that as we go into Dallas and go into these next matches against Valiant and Houston, um, that we can, we can take those matches convincingly in front of the home crowd and give everyone a good show. So. Um, Definitely trying to make the best of kind of a tough situation, and we're looking forward to the future. I think that we definitely can. Mickey, Mickey where have you been? In your heart. In my heart. People think people think you died or something. No, no. I'm seeing the team. Where have you been? Your home. Home? My home. My home.